And we are back with this week's reading of the Messianic Jewish Family Bible Tree of Life version, TLB. And we are on part three already. And part and in part three, we're beginning chapter 29. This week, we are completing uh, the book of Deuteronomy and the entire Torah. Uh, this week, we are reading chapters 25 to 34. And I'm going to continue with chapter 29. Moses called to all Israel and said to them, You have seen all that Adonai did before your eyes in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and all his servants in all his land, the great trials that your eyes saw, those great signs and wonders. But to this day, Adonai has not given you a heart to know or eyes to see or ears to hear. I led you 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes have not worn out on you. And your sandals have not worn out on your feet. Bread you have not eaten. And wine and strong drink you have not drunk. In order that you may know that I am Adonai your God. When you came to this place, King Sihon of Heshbon and King Og of Bashan came out against, against us to battle. But we struck them down. We took their land and gave it as an inheritance to Reuben Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh. So keep the words of this covenant and do them so that you may prosper in all that you do. Now we're going to be, begin this, the second part of chapter 29, Parashat Nitzavim, and that you are standing before the Lord. You are standing today, all of you, before Adonai, your God, the heads of your tribes, your elders, your officials, all the men of Israel, your children, your wives, and the outsider within your camp, from your wood chopper to your water carrier. Each of you is to cross over into the covenant of Adonai, your God, that he is cutting with you today and into his oath. This is an order to confirm you today as his people, so he will be your God, just as he promised you and just as he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Now, with you alone am I cutting this covenant and this oath, but with whomever is standing here with us today before Adonai our God, and with whomever is not here with us today. Indeed, you know how we dwelt in the land of Egypt and how we crossed through the nations that we passed through. You saw this detestable thing their detestable things and their idols, wood and stone, silver and gold that were with them. Beware in case there is among you a man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turns away today from Adonai our God to go serve the gods of those nations. Beware in case there is among you a root producing poison and bitter fruit. Now when someone hears the words of this oath, and in his heart considers himself blessed, thinking, Shalom will be mine, even though I walk in the stubbornness of my heart, thus sweeping away the moist with the dry. Adonai will be unwilling to forgive him, for then the anger of Adonai and his jealousy will smoke against that person. So all the oath that is written in this scroll will settle on him, and Adonai will blot out his name from under the heavens. Adonai will single him out from all the tribes of Israel for calamity according to all the oaths of the covenant written in the scroll of the Torah. The following generation, your children who rise up after you and the foreigner who comes from a distant land will say, when they see the plagues of the land and the sickness, Adonai afflicted on it, sulfur and salt, the whole land burnt. It cannot be planted. It cannot sprout. No grass can grow up, up, up on it like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim, which Adonai overturned in his anger and in his wrath. All the nations will say, why has Adonai done this to this land? Why this great burning anger? Then they will say, because they abandoned the covenant of Adonai, the God of their fathers, which he cut with them when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. They went and served other gods and bowed down to them, gods they never knew that he had not allotted to them. So Adonai's anger burned against that land, bringing on it every curse written in this scroll. Adonai has uprooted them from their soil in anger and wrath and great fury and hurled them into another land. 
as is the case this day. The secret thing belongs the secret things belong to Adonai, our God, but the things revealed belong to us and to our children forever in order to do all the words of this Torah. And that is the end of chapter 29. And to recap, the children of Israel are reminded of the covenant, and as the covenant is recalled, the Adonai reminded them that he took care of them for over 40 years. Their clothes never wore out in all of that time, and the battles against Sihon and Og were recapped. The abomination of idolatry was addressed again, and that God does not allow this. And this is reminded over and over again, so that is is, is really, really important. Um, and God is the same yesterday, uh, today, and forever, so he did not like a idolatry then and he doesn't like it now so i mean it, it, it was just said over and over and over again um as we're reading through the book of deuteronomy reminding benaya israel not to do this um so this is a very important thing for us to look at as well okay we are going to begin chapter 30 of deuteronomy now when all these things come upon you the blessing and the curse that I have set before you and you take them to heart in all the nations where Adonai your God has banished you and you return to Adonai your God and listen to his voice according to all that I am commanding you today you and your children with all your heart and with all your soul then Adonai your God will bring you back from captivity and have compassion on you and he will return and gather you from all the peoples where Adonai your God has scattered you, even if your outcasts, even if your outcasts are at the ends of the heavens, from there Adonai your God will gather you, and from there He will bring you. Adonai your God will bring you into the land that your fathers possessed, and you will possess it, and He will do you good and multiply you more than your fathers. Also, Adonai your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love Adonai your God with all your heart and all your soul in order that you may live. Adonai your God will put all these curses on your enemies and those who hate you, who persecuted you, then you, you will return and listen to the voice of Adonai and do all his mitzvot that I am commanding you today. Adonai your God will make you prosper in all the work of your hand, in the fruit of your womb, and the offspring of your livestock, and the produce of your soil for good. For Adonai will again rejoice over you for good, as he rejoiced over your fathers. When you listen to the voice of Adonai your God to keep his mitzvot and his statutes that are written in this scroll of the Torah, when you turn to Adonai your God with your, all your heart and with all your soul, for this mitzvah that I am commanding you today is not too difficult for you, nor is it too far off. It is not in the heavens that you should say, who will go up for us to the heavens and, and get it for us and have us hear it so we may do it. Nor is it across the sea that you should say, who will cross over for us to the other side of the sea and get it for us and have us hear it so we may do it. No, the word is very near to you in your mouth and in your heart to do it. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. What I am commanding you today is to love Adonai your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his misvot, statutes and ordinances. Then you will live and multiply and Adonai your God will bless you in the land you are going in to possess. And if your heart turns away and you do not listen, but are drawn away and bow down to other gods and worship them. I tell you today that you will certainly perish. You will not prolong your days on the land where you are about to cross over the Jordan to go in to possess. I call the heavens and the earth to witness about you today that I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. Therefore, choose life so that you and your descendants may live. By loving Adonai your God, listening to his voice and clinging to him, for he is your life and the length of your days that you may dwell in the land that Adonai swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them.
And that is the end of chapter 30. And there's a footnote um, from the New Testament, Romans chapter 10, verses 6, let's see here, 6 to 8. Um, and that reads, but the righteousness based on faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart, who will go up into heaven? That is to bring Messiah down. Or who will go into the abyss? That is to bring Messiah up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It's, this is being repeated again in the New Testament. The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we are proclaiming. So we have that exact word in our New Testament um, that Moses was giving to the people in Deuteronomy. So it was also repeated for us. So to recap chapter 30, the rewards of repentance are discussed. And in the second part, um, the cl closing advice is given. It is also commanded to love the Lord our God and walk in his ways. So now we're going to start uh, with Parashat Vayalek, um, which is V-A-Y-E-L-E-C-H. Shazak. Kazak, Shazak means be strong. And that's, that's spelled C-H-A-Z-A-K or Kazak. Be strong. Be courageous. So this is chapter 31. Then Moses went and spoke these words to all Israel. He said to them, I'm 120 years old today. I'm no longer able to go out and come in. Adonai has said to me, you are not to cross over this Jordan. Adonai, your God, he will cross over before you. He will destroy these nations from before you and you will be and you will dispossess them. Joshua, Joshua will cross over before you, just as Adonai has promised. Adonai will do to them, just as he did to Sihon and Og, the kings of the Amorites, and to their land when he destroyed them. Adonai will give them over to you, and you are to do to them according to all the mitzvot that I commanded you. Kazak. That's C-H-A-Z-A-K. Be strong is, is what he's saying. Be courageous. Do not be afraid or tremble before them. For Adonai, your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not fail you or abandon you. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong, be courageous, for you are to go with this people into the land. Adonai has sworn to their fathers to give to them, and you are to enable them to inherit it. Adonai, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or abandon you. Do not fear or be discouraged. Now he's saying the Lord God will not fail you or abandon you. Yeshua said those words too. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Public Torah readings is the next part of chapter 31. Moses wrote down this Torah and gave it to the Kohanim, the sons of Levi, who carried the Ark of the Covenant of Adonai and to all the elders of Israel. Then Moses commanded them, saying, At the end of every seven years and in, in the set time of the year of canceling debts during the Feast of Sukkot, when all Israel comes to appear before Adonai your God in the place he chooses, you are to read this Torah before them in their hearing, gather the people, the men and the women and the little ones and the outsider within your town gates so that they may hear and so they may learn and they will fear Adonai your God and take care to do all the words of this Torah. So their children who have not known will hear and learn to fear Adonai your God all the days you live on the land you are about to cross over the Jordan to possess. Then Adonai said to Moses, behold your time to die is near. Call Joshua and present yourselves at the tent of meeting, and I will commission him. Moses and Joshua went and presented themselves at the tent of meeting. Adonai appeared in the tent in a pillar of cloud 
and the pillar of cloud stood over the opening of the tent. Adonai said to Moses, Behold, you are about to lie down with your fathers. Then this people will rise up and prostitute themselves with the foreign gods of the land they are entering. They will abandon me and break my covenant that I cut with them. Then my anger will flare against them on that day, and I will abandon them and hide my face from them. So they will be devoured, and many evils and troubles will come on them. They will say on that day, Isn't it because our God is not among us that these these evils have come on us? I will surely hide my face on that day because of all the evil they have done, for they have turned to other gods. So God is telling Moses um, that if Israel, you know, in the future, actually what Israel is going to do in the future, and they do turn to other gods and um, what will happen. Um, Moses introduces his song as the last part of chapter 31. Now write this song for yourselves and teach it to Benaiah Israel. Put it in their mouth so that this song may be a witness for me against Benaiah Israel. When I bring them to the land flowing with milk and honey that I swore to their fathers and they eat and are satisfied and grow fat, then they will turn to other gods and serve them and they will spurn me and break my covenant. Now when many evils and troubles have come on them, this song will confront them as a witness for it will not be forgotten from the mouth of their descendants. For I know the intention they are devising this day, even before I bring them into the land that I swore. That day Moses wrote this song and taught it to Benaiah Israel. Then he commissioned Joshua, son of Nun, and said, Kazak, be strong, be courageous. For you will bring Benaiah Israel into the land I swore to them, and I will be with you. Now, when Moses had finished writing the words of this Torah on a scroll right to the end, Moses commanded the Levites, carriers of the Ark of the Covenant of Adonai, saying, Take this scroll of the Torah and place it beside the Ark of the Covenant of Adonai your God. It will remain there as a witness against you, for I know your rebellion and your stiff neck. Indeed, while I am still alive with you today, you have been rebellious against Adonai. How much more than after my death? Gather to me all the elders of your tribes and your officials so that I may speak these words in their ears and call heaven and earth to witness against them. For I know that after my death, you will certainly act corruptly and turn aside from the way I have commanded you. So evil will, evil will fall upon you in the latter days because you will do all you will do what is evil in the sight of Adonai, provoking him to anger by the work of your hands. Moses spoke in the hearing of the whole community of Israel the words of this song right to the end. So chapter 31, um, the appointment of Joshua takes place. Moses gave him encouragement. and the second part of the chapter, there was provision for the teaching, for teaching the law. And Moses had written this law and gave it to the priests of, of Levi. Moses commanded that at the end of every seven years, there needs to be a release in the Feast of Tabernacles in Sukkot. Um, all the people had gathered in the third part. Adonai appears before Moses, and Moses told was told that he was going to die, and Adonai instructed Moses to write a song for all of Benaiah Israel. And I... I think I may actually pause it now and come back with that song in chapter 32 in the next part.